Right, so I've recently acquired this Hewlett Packard Visualize C3000 workstation. Uh, it was one of the last PA RISC uh, workstations. Uh, this has got a PA8500 uh, running at 400 megahertz. Uh, takes a maximum of 8 gig RAM, but this only has 512 meg installed. Um, it uh, doesn't have the optional floppy disk and it came with the stock DVD, no, uh, CD-ROM drive. <clears throat> However, um, although it uh, powered up and it ejected, I couldn't get it to read anything. Um, when I disassembled it, I found that the lens was just floating around inside and that would have been an easy job to glue the lens back on were it not for the fact that the laser seemed to be not emitting anything so I junked the um, the CD bomb drive and bought myself um, a replacement uh, DVD bomb um, from eBay for just a few pounds and it didn't work either um, although different problem the drive uh, mechanism just stuck um, that turned out to be on this model uh, on, on this this type of unit there's a drive belt from the motor to the mechanism the first one had a pure gear mechanism and uh, um, the the drive belts um, tend to uh, deteriorate over time and it wasn't um, giving enough torque so um, I got a new one um, if anybody cares this Samsung um, unit uh, it was a 20 millimeter circumference uh, square cross section with side one and a half millimeters and that did the trick so that um, now ejects um, and loads quite well um, so it's got a nice uh, front panel uh, it's hard to see at the moment there is some text there but it, it illuminates when you turn on the power um, I'm going to see if I can one-handed yes open this up so that comes off <clears throat> easily and uh, you can see where this extra slot would go and the disc bays so it came with two discs um, two nine gig um, one of which was just completely dead. I mean, it wasn't spinning, it wasn't doing anything. Um, I don't know what it originally had on. Uh, this one did have a working OS, but it was on its last legs. It had um, the kind of whine of um, s drives, particularly Seagates, in my experience, that are um, about to die. So I put in um, a, a, a newer Fujitsu uh, disc here and I'm going to try and install a new operating system on that in a bit. Um, this is uh, SCSI 3 and uh, as you can see space for two discs there. So I'm going to turn it around and we'll have a look around the back. I should say it's very very heavy um for for this size of unit uh okay so <clears throat> down at the bottom we've got some nice big fans and airflow areas um we've got a couple of scuzzies um standard scuzzy and um differential mode um <clears throat> various audio in and outs here standard parallel port 10 100 lan couple of USB sockets one of which is a bit broken and a couple of serial ports so fairly standard stuff um, what's a bit less standard is this graphics card so this is a GFX 6 I believe and <clears throat> we'll we'll see um, that it's a very large beast inside in a moment but it comes with this um, strange connector which I had never seen before so I've seen 13W3 on Suns and Silicon Graphics, which you can easily get a, an adapter. This looks like a DVI, but it isn't. It's a bit longer. There's some more pins in the middle. Let's see if I can get a bit closer. 
get the light in a slightly different direction. There we go. It might be easier to see. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, called EVC, which I've never used, and I don't have an adapter. So, what uh, what I've been doing is just plugging in a serial line to serial program on the PC, and if it doesn't find a keyboard and mouse, um, it uh, dumps everything to the console, and uh, you can use it in command line mode. So we'll have a look at that later. I'll uh, I'll need to get a some kind of adapter once I've um, figured out where to get one from. So let's have a look inside. Uh, one thing to note is that there's uh, a micro switch I think down this uh, this corner next to the power supply which means that you can't run it, uh, it won't turn on with the back off. Um, presumably for airflow reasons um, but uh, for whatever reason, yeah, you can't run it like a, a normal PC would work quite happily with the cover off. Anyway, that unclips from the side, and we can now see the insides. So, what immediately strikes you is this huge power supply and some instructions about undoing these. Uh, these screws, they're a bit too tight, I'm going to have to get a screwdriver and then lifting up this handle here so I'm just going to undo those and then we'll have a look underneath alright, now with the uh, thumb screws released you can lift up the power unit and it slots into this bracket there so that's, that's nice and firm, that's not going to fall over uh, for some servicing and you can clearly see if I get the light in the right angle Some nice big fans this main one here um, some more One over here and uh, That will give some airflow over the RAM uh, Which is uh, as you can see four of eight populated at the moment heat sink there on some uh, chipset and the main CPU there with its own fan and some massive power connectors and really thick cables so some good HP engineering here let's look above and you can see here some ribbon cables that go to the the DVD or CD-ROM drive, uh, which I, I forgot to mention actually, isn't SCSI, it's um, Powerdial ATA, so um, you can get cheap replacements from the PC uh, um, types, and there's a, a ribbon cable here, which is the floppy, if, if there was one installed, with its power connector. I don't know, maybe fun to get one just for the... <laughs> just to make it complete. Um, in the top here we've got another fan and a loudspeaker and some PCI slots and as you can see here this this three or these three um, cards here is the graphics unit the graphics card really is three uh, things working together um, I haven't actually taken those out to have a look uh, maybe I should do that to give it a dust if nothing else um, there were a few sort of furry dust balls in here that I've cleaned out. Yeah, let's uh, let's have a look at those. So, with a little bit of effort, um, I pulled out the cards. So, as you can see, two of them are actually attached to the motherboard with this third kind of daughter board um, bolted on and with some big connectors, and obviously the two chips here, who knows what they do, presumably the main processing because they've, they've got big heat sinks and what looks like maybe RAM around. Um, just some code numbers here, I don't know if they mean anything to anybody. Um, made in Puerto Rico apparently. This is frame buffer. 
HP design, so um, quite why there are three of them is anybody's guess. Let me know another big chip, no two chips there on the bottom board and some more looking around there. So yeah, who knows what each of those does, but I suspect this um, being aimed at the sort of CAD market, that's certainly how um, it looked from the advert I saw online. Um, I guess it would be um, competing against um, sort of the silicon graphics um, offerings at the time. Um, this is a weird bit of plastic just tied on. I don't know what that's for. Maybe some cable tie or something, but I don't know what that would be tying. Anyway, um, so, and this one here, whether that was for some extra option, maybe a longer card with more of these, whatever those are. Um, bigger, better options, who knows. Anyway, I think I will put this back um, and uh, we'll go to the console and see if we can uh, get it to boot off CD and maybe install a new OS. Um, this officially, I think, supported HPUX 10, 20, 11 and 11i. 11i was certainly the latest, um, that's 11i version 1, the latest that was officially supported. Um, later versions came on DVD, uh, which of course this didn't have originally. Now I've got a DVD, I am going to see whether I can get it to boot. Um, but it certainly wasn't uh, officially supported. Right, so <clears throat> I've got the um, USB to serial connector, 9600 board, no stop bits, usual kind of thing. And I'm going to start up the machine and we're going to see if we can boot and install from the CD-ROM. Um, I've taken out the old 9 gig disc and put in a new Fujitsu so it won't boot anything at the moment. Um, also I've, um, I'm going to use the HPUX 11i v2 which is not officially supported so it's on DVD which the original machine of course wouldn't be able to read um, with just a CD-ROM. I have tried off camera the version 3 and I do get a kernel but um, it crashes so I'm going to try this now we can interrupt that boot sequence and we get to this boot prompt um, there's quite a, a good little help system here um, the some important things you might want to try Go through to the information menu system and uh, well all gives you everything but let's say you just want to look at memory there you go it tells you what's in what slot and go back to the main menu do something like that um, Let's have a look at the configuration menu. So we can choose various options there. Um, one thing I might have to uh, change later on is the monitor setting, as you can see here. Um, that's what it's outputting, and uh, I've read that you can you can change that. But that will be when I get a cable. There's no point in trying to fiddle with that until I get a cable. So, um, I'm going to go back to the main. Um, now we can search for devices and wait a short time. And this should find the in one internal disk and the, um, the CD-ROM or DVD-ROM. And uh, Ashley has found the, the LAN as well. You can boot off a LAN device Okay, 
so this gives us the path um, and so if you want to boot off a non-default uh, device you would do something like boot P P1 which is the CD-ROM um, I'm going to say yes and then that will um, boot the ISL the initial system loader as, as it's called um, off the DVD and then you've got another bunch of uh, options um, here you can uh, run specific options on the HPUX kernel so HPUX is the command to the ISL which tells it to boot uh, HPUX and you can do things like nope not that uh, minus I S I believe is to sync for single mode uh, maintenance mode um, in this case we are wanting to um, boot off the installer on the DVD so we would do something like Now we, we wouldn't have to go through this if we'd have selected no and not interact with the ISL, that would happen automatically. But because we've gone into this ISL prompt, um, if we want to now do that DVD install, that's what we need to tell it. Okay, so we've got a hardware path. And we wait a little while. I can see that the DVD is uh, being accessed. The green light on the front is flickering a little bit. I'm getting some errors there. I don't quite know how important those are, whether it'll be fatal or not. But it seems to be chugging away still, so I'm just going to leave it and see what happens. This is going to take a while. Though I do remember spending quite a few hours installing, uh, what would it have been, HPUX 9, 10, 20. Um, on uh, 715, 75s, 50s, um, so that's that's like 50 megahertz machines, 75 megahertz machines uh, back in the day, and I had an HP SCSI external CD-ROM uh, with a caddy, and that was one speed. So um, yeah, that was not fast. I uh, left that running overnight. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so it's asking for CD2. There we are. So I'll change that. And off we go again, I suppose. Okay, for some reason I had to reconnect the uh, RS-232 module. And now it seems to be sending the carriage return. It just wasn't uh, connected somehow. And to So it's uh, going through another set of software uh, sets to install, and so we wait again. Okay, so it's finished um, the second DVD. We do have some errors here, um, and now it seems to be building a new kernel. All right, so kernel seems to have um, been created and it's now booting, it would seem. So I don't really understand why we saw errors before, given that this is reporting no errors. Maybe I'll investigate some of the logs, if it all succeeds, and I can get in afterwards. Alright, well, we'll leave this going. We seem to be back at uh, selection of language. Mm, language variant. Mm, yeah, okay. United Kingdom looks good. 90 megabytes, well, 
you know, I don't think I really care about 90 meg. Okay. Okay, all right, that was a bit weird, but. Aha. Uh -huh. So this seems to be uh, starting up from the disk. Well, that seems to be it. Um, I don't know what the password is. It's interesting. What did I specify? Ah, yes, now I remember. Of course. Wow, okay. So that's um, the 785, so that's the um, C3000 model, which shouldn't be able to support, not officially, 11i um, version 2, but it seems to be running. So I'll have to test it a bit more, of course. Um, um, but uh, certainly things are looking promising so far. So there is um, a third disc um, with apps on. Um, I'll need to have a look at that. Um, and then I don't know whether we've got support bundles uh, for patches that are post this, I think it was 2004 release. Um, but I think that's enough for this, this video. Thank you for watching.